Hello and welcome to Instagram Live from Breast Cancer Now. I am Rachel, I'm one of the nurse specialists working at Breast Cancer Now and tonight we are going to be talking about breast cancer and diet. I'm going to be joined by um, Adele who is a dietitian is going to be answering all your questions and we've had lots of questions we get um lots and lots oh hello hi there rachel lovely to see you you too <laughs> yeah we talked lots haven't we over the last few weeks Adele? we have we have and this is always my hardest bit just connecting and then once once i'm connected i'm home free <laughs> i'm absolutely the same because so many things can go wrong so, exactly <laughs> yeah i was just in introducing the session and Great. um and just saying that we're going to be talking about breast cancer and diet we get so many questions about um what to eat what not to eat about weight gain about weight loss about um what's safe what's not um it's a complete minefield for people mm, it really is supplements around phytoestrogens around soya and I know that you have been um, really involved with um, our charity and the Younger Women Together events and answering lots of, of their questions and um, so maybe some of you who are joining tonight will also know Adele which would be really <laughs> lovely. Um, Definitely. Yeah so um, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself and then we'll get cracking on some of the things that come up most 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 often and try and answer some of your questions if you've got things to post definitely okay. definitely please do post away so um thank you rachel i'm adele uh, i'm an oncology dietitian i've been in the uk since 2002 and working at the in the nhs uh since that time i've been a dietitian since 2011 um, before that, I was in pharmacy, so I have quite a broad experience um, working across with cancer patients. And I really have been working with breast cancer now probably for about four or five years. Um, and I've even done some of the, the secondary groups as well. So I've really? seen a lot of ladies and they always really struggle with lots of the myths around eating and cancer, mm. not really sure what to eat. And my goal is always to really reassure um, and hopefully help patients, just people move forward um, mm. and to be able to control what they can. Yeah. I'm currently working now with a little startup called Onco Health and we are helping, we're hoping to develop a cancer app um, sort of for coaching and advice for patients. Mm. So um, hopefully there'll be something more out there as well um, that I'll be able to share with, with you people out there. <laughs> Fantastic. What's your time scale on that? Is it a long process? We we have um we have an app. So um it, it's been, we're working with Imperial at the moment too, working with some patients there. So it's just in development. We're just carrying on developing and seeing what we need. So hopefully we'll be able to have sort of a very holistic app that has sort of cancer professionals. We're at the heart of it to be able to help people remotely because as we know with COVID, things are just all change yeah. and. I mean, I know there's not enough of us oncology dietitians to go around um, mm -hmm. and there's lots of misinformation. There's lots of good information out there as well, but it's being able to know where to go yeah. um, for that and what's going to work for you as an individual because everyone is so different. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, welcome to everybody who's joining. We've got lots of people online now. Um, <laughs> I was just uh, explaining that we are talking about diet and breast cancer and I wondered... Maybe just to start, I mean, we've got, we have got loads of questions, but maybe just to start, what is a really common thing that you get asked? Um, Probably about? the most common thing that is slowly getting less common, but I do still get asked mostly mm. is does sugar feed cancer? So I think that's probably one right. of the main questions that I get asked mm. um, from lots of different people, uh, family members, loved ones, you know, even health professionals, you know, what does mm. the evidence say? And then how, what I'm really interested in is how does that translate to you and what yeah. does it mean? So first of all, to reassure you, the, the answer is no. You don't need to worry about the foods that you're eating that are going to be able to feed through into you feeding your cancer. Um, I think what, what we do know is that a cancer cell is the same as, or is different, but it's, it's still a, a cell of your body. So it uses all the same energy that your body uses. 
So if mm. you cut out sugar from your diet, it's not going to starve the cell. Your body will just use okay. other um, important nutrients to to grow. Um, so it's more about looking at the overall balance and making sure you're meeting your requirements. That's not to say some people might want to look at eating a bit less sugar um, <laughs> or it might be something that you're needing to help support your body through treatment with all the taste mm, changes. Mm. So again, it's everybody is really, really, really different. Um, but there isn't that evidence that's showing that cutting out anything at all is going to make that impact that that we're after. Is now maybe a good time to talk about um, the thing, I mean, just thinking about weight mm. gain. I mean, most yeah. people who go through treatment, one of the side effects or effects of that treatment will be that your taste will change, mm -hmm. that your, what you're eating will potentially change, particularly when you're going through chemotherapy. The whole, pro the whole difficult nightmare Definitely. of having a diagnosis of breast cancer. Mm. Um, and nearly everybody that we talk to on our helpline gains weight mm. and it causes for many women such a lot of distress definitely and are I there do. any sort of things that tips. you could tips um, yeah i think weight change is a massive part of what i see as well yeah. um weight increases or decreases yeah. but especially for women uh, body changing where it's growing, becoming larger, um, especially in the sort of society that we live in, mm. it makes people feel like they're not in their own body and their body's changing. Um, and it's also sort of up against the fact that we, you know, with a new diagnosis or, or an old diagnosis of breast cancer, you, you sort of, I can, I hear that women lose their trust in their body. Yeah. Um, and on top of everything else that you just said, Rachel, everything's always topsy-turvy. Mm. So I'm a non-diet dietitian, so I would never ever recommend anyone restricting their diet, especially mm. a cancer patient. So anyone going through treatment or even afterwards, I just find that that whole restriction actually causes more damage in the long run. Right. It slows down metabolism, which means then people need to eat less to mm. do the same amount of things. And that's what dieting does it causes that weight cycling right. um, and we know that diets over sort of two to five years after you've been on a diet most people put on even more weight mm. so mm. it's always taking it back to basics the nourishment focusing on things that people can change so more fruits and veg more fibers more physical activity that they enjoy um, having adequate rest um, and, and good sleep and anything that can help dampen down and reduce your stress levels. Right. So all of those other things can really make an impact to help your body feel mm. more comfortable while it's traveling through your treatment. Okay. I mean, because we get asked things about the 5-2 diet. Yes. About should, they, should people go to Weight Watchers? Yeah. Is there anything that you can suggest around that if somebody wants to... So again, I would really proactive. strip it back. And I actually mm. think heading to a sort of diet club or any other diet is actually going to do yourself a disservice okay. because most people who are on treatment actually need their body needs that food. It needs that nourishment. Mm -hmm. um, and in my experience, most people who are putting on weight are often restricting already. Um, so their body, the way that mm -hmm. their body deals with the stress is holding on to things. Mm -hmm. So actually heading yourself into another restrictive diet might give you results to start with but actually in long term you're more likely to end with that 95 percent of people who put weight back on yeah. and actually that is damaging for yeah. all very sorts of reasons so, yeah. very. so i think it's coming back to eating a balanced diet mm. and i guess that's where some of the confusion lies as well what is that <laughs> absolutely and and would you suggest that when you're talking about a um a balanced diet that you're reducing your portion size is that it depends that to be honest do? again most women in a massive generalization a lot of the time we're mm. not eating enough um so it is about taking things back and actually 
it's focusing on things that maybe if you want to move more and find yeah. more ways of moving, if mm. you're not nourishing your body, you won't have mm. the energy to move more. So yeah. actually it's making sure you're having some energy foods, some protein foods. Don't mm. be afraid of really good fat foods um, yeah. and being able to eat those things so that your body has everything it needs for you to move and function as you want to. Um, and I always focus far more on exercise and the benefits of that yeah. with food as a support rather than any sort of restrictions i think that is absolutely fantastic <laughs> advice exercise i mean we've mm. talked a lot about exercise on this channel definitely it's really hard to get going start small you can go back to some of our other lives that we've done to mm. to look at some people's experience on that but it will lift your mood lift exactly. your endorphins definitely and really just make you feel so much better definitely and then it's just it is actually focusing on because exercise also will it help support your muscle mass yeah. which actually Im improves your body composition and the number on the scales doesn't give you those inform that mm. information it just pushes you down further so mm. it pushes your mood down and then mm. often that's where people will actually you know fall to food as a comfort um and not necessarily an enjoyment comfort. It's almost like a punishment comfort. And that mm. whole cycle I see all the time. And actually mm. it's far more detrimental to go down that and maybe strip it back mm. and focus on something else. Yeah, brilliant. Um, somebody's, um, Christine has just said, what about um, the much cited link to dairy? Yes, that's probably another question I get asked a lot as well. Yeah. Um, and dairy is has um there was quite a few sort of stories out there a while ago that were very anti-dairy um and linking sort of hormones in milk that were possibly causing an increase in cancer risk and especially breast cancer risk so it's one of the sort of nutrients or food groups i should say that is actually quite heavily researched so mm -hmm. some other sort of newer sort of theories around food aren't as heavily researched but dairy surprisingly has actually been shown to decrease possibly decrease the risk of breast cancer. So that I think was quite a surprise. Um, mm. And, you know, so it's something you can enjoy very safely, mm. but I also understand that some people, for, for some people that still won't reassure them enough. And if you're choosing not to have dairy, that's absolutely fine. It's making sure you can get those nutrients, which mm. are mainly iodine, protein um, and calcium from other sources. Mm. So that's what's really important. And that's where we're, the balance, I guess, will mean something different to everyone as to what they eat and what they feel comfortable eating. Mm. And so. what they enjoy eating. So. Definitely. That's so true. <laughs> oh, God. And that's why I hate yeah. diets as well, because it takes yeah. the enjoyment out of food. It's so much more than, than just an, a nutrient. It's especially those social and um, important for those, you know, celebrations. And, you know, we all saw how Christmas went this year. So <laughs> it was just, we just need... You know, food is just so much more. I'm just smiling. Life. Colleen says that's great news as she loves cheese. <laughs> um, we had a question um, a little while ago mm. that I just made a note of. Um, somebody was asking about um, how uh, you look after your nails. What can you take to help repair them after? Or is yeah. there something you can do after you've had chemotherapy or whilst you're going through it? So that, again, I, it's, it can be, again, why my messages can be a little bit... Um, can be ignored a little bit because it's a bit boring um, and it's just the balance it's yeah. normally looking at what might be missing in your diet so protein is really important for healing so that comes from things like beans pulses lentils meat fish dairy soya nuts seeds i think i've okay. got a main gist, gist of that if you're eating quite a bit of that we need a decent amount of that when you're having treatment anyway um mm. normally at least two to three portions so most meals having some sort of protein with it that they also come with a, a whole heap of other nutrients so that's normally a good good option um mm. i think it's the sort of at least five fruit and veg a day and actually that leads me on to the fact that when you're having your treatment, you might not feel like that many fruit and veg. Yeah. And that's OK if it's just during your treatment. Um, it's sort of going with the flow and seeing what you can have. Mm -hmm. um, and whilst we never recommend supplements for sort of any sort of reducing or, or curing cancer, sometimes if you're struggling to eat that balanced diet during your treatment, most oncologists will let you have an A to Z multivitamin and mm -hmm. mineral that just has a little bit of everything, but not too much of anything, because that's mm. where the problems lie with some supplements. So it might just be something that you're, you're missing out in that way. But calcium is another important, oh, I like that question. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, calcium is another important thing to support your your nails. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making a note of that one. It's a good one. <laughs> we can't can't talk about <laughs> we have to talk about booze at some point <laughs> yeah. i just want to say really quickly to the other part of the nails if um you can remember um to rub in some kind of oil any oil is oh, fine yeah. in terms of olive oil definitely cuticle oil it yeah. will really really help your nails if you can remember to do that on a regular basis and particularly at the moment because we're using so much hand sanitizer definitely and definitely god knows so what tricky. and it's cold outside mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you want to do the red wine white wine question I or talk about uncle now definitely <laughs> <laughs> um it's probably the the toughest part of um especially the way that I practice because I don't like to restrict anything um but alcohol is one of those things that there isn't many many joyful stories about breast cancer and alcohol my normal top tip is to save the drinking or any drinking until you have a celebration so we know any sort of regular drinking even if it's just a small amount can increase the risk of breast cancer and possibly recurrence so there is um you know best to save and then enjoy for those special occasions rather than having anything habitually um or regularly like that that um might be more of a habit actually than um you know a way to relax at the end of the day those kind of things that that we're having um and i normally say then when you do have that celebration have what you enjoy so if you enjoy white wine rather than red wine have the white wine yeah. <laughs> the benefits in red wine are generally the color and you can get that color from lots of other fruit and veg so um enjoy what you want when you have it um and savor that rather than picking an alcohol that might be a bit better but then you're not satisfied and then you might have more or yeah. go for something else mm -hmm. so it's the same with food in that kind yeah. of way you want so to be it's, satisfied it's about enjoying definitely what, what you enjoy definitely when you really yeah. want to enjoy it that exactly makes sense. definitely because alcohol is one that's the less the better but mm -hmm. if you do enjoy it you know have it at that special occasion um that yeah don't uh, pull the gin down the sink i like that one <laughs> So I'm, <laughs> I'm just in the in the throes of dry January myself. So well done, good for you. <laughs> like. um, right, so we've got. Uh, I'm just thinking supplements keep coming mm -hmm. up, yeah. and they come up all the time. And um, they come up on our Ask Our Nurse service. They come up on our helpline. Um, do you want? Yeah, to say? I think supplements are one of the scariest part i think of sort of looking looking at i guess the internet and seeing what might you know people are looking for help there that's all they're searching for help and hope mm. um it's not that there's any sort of reason but there's people out there that you know think that they can sell these things that um actually when people are on an active treatment some of these supplements especially high dose things can interfere with the treatment especially things like chemotherapy we worry that high dose sort of antioxidants like high dose vitamin c um, or vitamin e might actually dampen down the response of a treatment um, my recommendation is always to chat to your oncologist um, or your cancer nurse or your pharmacist. Yeah. So they're often the forgotten <laughs> member of the team, but they're actually the drug gurus. So they'll know the exact treatment that you're on and can usually look around in this sort of Bible that they have to be able to look at specific interactions because yeah. some things are safe, but you just don't know. And the problem is they're not regulated as, yeah. as strictly as um, a drug. Um, and they're in far higher doses without the normal control that food gives you when you have a nutrient. So we don't eat nutrients normally in isolation. They're in a food matrix and our body's very good at breaking down and taking in what they need. Mm. But when we take in a high dose, um, you know, sometimes we can have a, a complete opposite reaction. So mm. um, I guess the other, the flip side of that is there'll be some prescribed supplements excuse me, that you might get, um, you know, iron supplements, calcium supplements. Um, and if you're prescribed those, and they're generally something that's very well studied that you're going to need. So it's working again with your team and your treatment. Um, often, I mean, I'm very pragmatic. I like to dig around and see if someone gives me something that they're wanting to try, I will find out yeah. whether it's safe and be able to give you the information that you need because ultimately it's you making a decision on what you want to take. Yeah, there is, a, I mean, the website that we use a lot at Breast Cancer Now 
is the Sloan Kettering herbal. Definitely love that. And I'm going to put a link to that when Excellent. we put this up on um, Facebook, because this will go onto Facebook after it, we take a recording and then put it up. And yeah. I would really recommend that because you can put in your, uh, the herb that you're, or supplement that you're thinking mm -hmm. about, and it will tell you about interactions. But if you are on treatment, mm -hmm particularly things like chemotherapy, et cetera, where you're going backwards and forwards to the hospital for that treatment. Mm. You really, really do, as you have said, Adele, need to talk to your mm -hmm. team just Definitely. to make sure. They might not have the answer for you. Your pharmacist, as you rightly said, mm. is a great reference point for all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And they get better and better. As they really do. Months. <laughs> I love Definitely. my pharmacist. <laughs> um, so, so yes, um, really do check and and do check this uh, website when um, we'll put Definitely. it up for you. And I think that's just made me think of something because a lot of a lot of you might be on newer treatments as well, mm. and they're the things where we don't know. So, mm. but actually getting that advice might be able to give you sort of some peace to know. And the other thing is, if you're looking at a nutrient, often the food source is far safer. Mm. Um, so say something like turmeric, I'm often saying, you know, go for it in the food, yeah. um, but be far more cautious if you're ever going to take anything in a supplement form, yeah. um, just because the food form is so much safer. Yeah. Good advice. Mm. Um, any thoughts on fluid retention? Fluid retention. So as a general rule, there isn't as much we can do diet wise but there are mm. some things you might want to tick off that you're following and that again is protein surprisingly it's making sure that you're drinking enough fluid yes yeah. you have a little sip of tea <laughs> um i've got mine here too and so the fluid if you don't have enough fluid sometimes your body will hold on to more fluid just in case so it can be making sure that you're getting enough fluid um, moving more yeah. can help as well so keeping as active and less inactivity so it's not just about exercise um but it's about just getting up moving around especially if you're at home uh it's it's really easy to sit down a lot of the time so mm. different ways you know when the tv uh, ads come on get up walk around all those kind of things can help um with fluid so yeah not as yeah. many it can be caused by medications or treatment yeah. um or disease uh mm. but there are some things to check yeah yeah, I think um, when I was talking to Liz O'Riordan um, a couple of months ago about exercise, mm. she had this great plan that you put a pile of stuff at the bottom of your stairs. If you've got stairs in your house, if you're in a flat, you can't do this. Mm. And you take up it, it up piece by piece. And that that's will brilliant. really get your steps up. So I thought that was a... Definitely. Yeah, that's a good one. A good I do that anyway because I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I like to put things up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, loads of questions about soya. Excellent. Okay. Uh, again, that's another question I do get asked a lot about. Um, and it's similar to the dairy story, actually. So it was originally thought that soya, as it is a phytoestrogen, which means plant, um, plant based, it's like a plant chemical, it is shaped in a similar way to estrogen. So the fear was that this would bind onto your estrogen receptors and, and promote cancer. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, it's looking like it's the other way around. So yeah. it looks like it's, it's going to dampen down um, sort of that response, which is very reassuring. Um, and actually is shown to be a little bit protective to reduce breast cancer risk and possibly recurrence. So that's come through in the new data um, from World Cancer Research Fund. Yeah. So be reassured to have um, soya as a food product. We're not so sure about soya concentrated supplements though. So just be cautious with those. Um, it is again, it kind of feeds into you're not needing to be vegetarian, but it's a good idea to eat more plant-based when, when you're well um, to help, you know, with your overall balance. And soya is a great protein, vegetarian protein. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's reassuring for, for some, definitely. Especially vegetarian, it can be really hard if you're fearful mm. of, of soya and then you're like, what am I going to eat? And I think mm. one of our ladies asked that question before we started. Um, so be reassured that soya is fine, safe and possibly protective. Yeah in food um yeah we had that question from katie sent in so yes. so hopefully that's uh okay. um i think we've talked about um low carb diets yeah it's similar mm. to the sugar feeds cancer but it's a little bit different mm, um, okay. in the fact that 
And I think that's, again, where you head into the diet territory. Um, and my issue with restricting, again, it's same with, with the whole issue with if you were to restrict sugar as a, a whole nutrient. Um, sugar is in so many different things. And actually, all our body cells need sugar for energy. Mm. So if we starve our body of that sugar, we're often missing out on that energy. But also, sugar is um, the main sort of uh, nutrient that's in plant foods mm. so we're going to miss out on a whole heap of fiber mm. um, which actually has been shown to be protective as well and I am a fiber fiend love fiber it's, it's just so nourishing for us in so many mm. different ways um, and actually if we're cutting out carbs we're often going to miss out on energy and fiber foods so mm. it, and often again it's moving away from a plant-based diet which we know can be protective so mm. It's, again, that balance, that sort of message. Some people find results in the short term, but my issue is the long term. The adherence is so hard um, and it, yeah, it just doesn't pay off. It's, mm. yeah, in, in my opinion. So it's just having that balance, having that energy, having that fibre. Pasta and rice are fine too. <laughs> yeah. um, if you're wanting to, again, I guess I get the whole, do I need to eat brown rice? Do I need to eat white rice question? And I always go for, go for what you prefer. Yeah. But I guess the other thing is when you're looking at foods just for health, you forget what you enjoy. So actually mm. you might like brown pasta in some dishes and then you're going to get a big fiber boost, but you can't handle it with your mum's bolognese. So that's fine. You know, it's, it's being curious mm. with food and taking away um, sort of the good and bad and exploring things a little bit differently and, and um, almost starting a bit fresh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Making things interesting. Yeah, that's good. definitely. Um, somebody asked earlier about um, sore mouth. Yes. And oh. anything that you can suggest or to avoid when you've got a sore mouth? Mm -hmm. So I think lots of the treatments can cause a sore mouth. Um, mm -hmm. And that is actually one of the reasons I got into cancer nutrition, because I was working in pharmacy and people kept coming up with a really, really sore mouth mm -hmm. and they couldn't eat. You know, and they're like, everything either tastes different or my mouth is really sore or it's really dry. Um, and so generally it's making sure you're well hydrated take adequate painkillers um, check or get your health professional to check for things like oral thrush um, and it's having soft sloppy foods probably no spice more bland um, but again if you're if it's more uh, taste changes that you're finding you might actually find more flavorful spicy foods give you more mm. taste so it's ex again a bit more of an experimenting but it's not normally as joyful because it can be very painful there's lots your pharmacy can give you though to help mm. your mouth um and i guess yeah it's just checking that it's not something treatable like oral thrush mm. um very high blood sugars those kind of things that can make your mouth very sore mm. but take your painkillers <laughs> definitely yeah. and you want to be able to eat Checking in with your team mm. as well. Don't mm. be afraid Definitely. to give them a call Definitely. and say to They're them, still there. You "Don't, yeah, you really do not have to suffer with exactly these awful things." Um, mm. And and I was just thinking while you were talking about fiber, about mm. constipation, because mm -hmm. yep. I mean, lots of people, particularly um, people, women who've got secondary disease, then they'll be on treatment after treatment, and they might fluctuate between diarrhea and constipation, mm -hmm. and just trying to get the balance. Right, yes. with that and the drugs that they're on can be really hard. And any of my team that are watching, I think there's a few of them, this is probably <laughs> the thing that we see the most. Mm. So we see constipation far more than diarrhoea these days. Mm. I think it's always fearful that people are going to get diarrhoea from chemotherapy. That's sort of one of yeah. the messages that, that used to be there. But now we're very good at giving medications that actually bung people up far more. Um, and some of the chemotherapies cause constipation too. Mm. And actually, if your gut is sluggish, you're less likely mm. to eat, which is why mm. we end up as dietitians 
you know, helping quite a bit. Um, if it's drug induced constipation, we always recommend drugs to help um, because you could eat all the fiber in the world, but these medications are stopping your gut moving. So you do need something to help keep it moving through. So don't be afraid of using laxatives. And again, there's so many different types. Yeah. So talk to your nurses. Um, some people need two or three different types, especially if um, it's something that's a bit more long standing. And often if you're going both ways, so you're going from constipation mm -hmm. to diarrhea, often with a little chat we will lean back on treating the constipation because normally you can get a little bit of overflow and you get looser mm -hmm. stool but mm -hmm. actually then if you almost treat the diarrhea you're going to end up even worse in this cycle and it can be really debilitating actually yeah, the constipation can just take over yeah. um, someone's life because it it's painful and mm -hmm. people feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. and then they don't feel like eating yeah. so you really it's um, the things that can help that you can do that aren't med aren't drugs um, are mm. fluids. So um, drinking more fluids, and I guess that leads me to say it can be tea, coffee, smoothies, juice. Um, doesn't have to be just water, especially with taste changes. Some mm. you might just feel like you don't feel like any um, anything like water. It's boring or it tastes funny. Mm. Um, fiber, so some fibers, especially sort of softer, sloppier fibers, fruits, those kind of things might be easier to eat um, and they will help a little bit and moving. Yeah. So literally moving your gut yeah. um, will help as well, but don't be afraid of the drugs. Um, and if you know it's a certain time around your chemotherapy, take a laxative just before um, yeah. so that you're pre, pre prepared. Um, yeah. Thank you. That's really right. useful. Um, we just have a look, see if we've missed anything out that people have asked. Um, oh, I, in fact, one of our nurses asked a question mm. today. Um, she um, had a call from somebody who had osteope osteopenia. Yeah. And she wanted to improve it with supplements and diet rather than conventional medication. Mm -hmm. Any advice there? I think I would always um, use... use um, complementary i prefer the complementary path so we're sticking with the, the medical management as well as these things complementing um treatment so osteopenia is sort of a can be a precursor to osteoporosis mm. um so you can get sort of bone pain vitamin d is actually one of the really important nutrients that will help you um, absorb your calcium to help strengthen your bones so vitamin d chronically low in the uk very easy to check. I would always ask your GP or your oncologist mm. to, to do a blood test because then you can get the appropriate treatment. So the doses are all different. And then they'll regularly check to make sure you've come back up again, um, especially this year where so many more of us are having to mm. stay inside. You might be shielding. So it's just about um, making sure your vitamin D is, is enough. Mm. Um, I'm very reluctant to recommend calcium unless you're recommended calcium supplements um, or your diet is very chronically low in calcium. Um, so making sure you're having enough calcium containing foods. Yeah. The British Dietetic Association has some great food facts. So you can just Google BDA calcium and you get a nice little list of all the calcium mm. sources. So it's making sure you get enough of those as well. Yeah. Um, activity does help strengthen bones too. Yeah. Um, just that literal banging of your feet on the ground will help mm. to strengthen your bones. So it's sort of of, again another push for that activity and moving a bit more i think mm. i've i don't think i've forgotten anything <laughs> brilliant um i think someone asked about eggs and they are safe go for it oh okay i missed that one <laughs> <laughs> i think we've nearly kind of come to the end of our questions now unless there's something that you think we've missed out yeah, oh i know what i was going to ask about yeah. about yeah. um if you've got a low appetite yeah what can you do to increase it? Yeah, so Are the I things think, that you can eat to do that. And that's sort of one thing I had on my list, sort of, you know, when you're having treatment or mm. you're having a treatment break and you're feeling a little bit rubbish, you're poorly um, and you don't feel like eating. So the first thing to do is sort of maybe do a little bit of a, a body scan and see if there's anything that's treatable that might be causing that poor appetite. Mm. So again, constipation can be a big key that a lot of people don't mm. realize, you know, you don't realize, Oh, I actually haven't been to the toilet for a couple of days. Maybe that's why I don't feel that hungry. Um, sore mouth, those kind of things can again be a reason for mm. um, lower appetite. Um, there also is quite a link with, um, stress 
mental health issues, if you're feeling anxiety, um, depression, that can both push down your appetite can have the opposite effect as well. Mm. But think outside and do that whole sort of um, think of your body and, and if there's anything that you might need a little bit of help with. Um, and then it's maybe leaning towards some of those foods that give you comfort. Mm. Um, and that's where you might lead to, you know, that chocolate mac and cheese or the takeaway, whatever, yeah. you know, gives you that little bit of a boost. And then that food might actually start to, um, start the ball rolling again because often when we don't eat it kind of means that we then might feel a bit sick that's the other mm. thing actually um, nausea can cause yes. poor appetite yeah. so having some anti sickness tablets before you eat if you're prescribed to them can sometimes mm. help um, you eat a bit more at meal times so mm. um, those kind of things are really important as well yeah so I think if you're really struggling and you're losing weight and you're not meaning to, then that's when you lean back on your team to, to give you some tips yeah. and they might have a dietitian or someone that can help. So yeah. definitely you don't want to lose weight um, without trying. Brilliant. Mm. I think one last question before mm. we finish. Um, somebody just asked about the keto diet. Keto. So that's similar to <clears throat> the low carb and the sugar chat that we've had today. Um, the keto, it takes it to the extreme where you have so low carbohydrate that your body burns fat for energy. Um, so there is evidence of a keto diet helping with epilepsy, mm -hmm. um, specifically children's epilepsy that doesn't respond to drugs. There is studies going on in the cancer world, um, but they're not really showing any evidence that I would recommend. Um, for multiple reasons. Um, it's a very, very, very hard diet to follow and we're not seeing results that would mean that's worth mm. it. Um, and it might be something that comes up in the future as almost mm. some form of how I envisage would be a, a cyclical way alongside treatment. Yeah. Um, but we're nowhere near knowing if anything like that works. Um, and actually I see the harms of it far more, people losing right. weight without trying, far more complications with their treatments treatment stopping can't get enough of their treatment um and it causes quite a bit of family friction as well so if you were going to try something like that just chat it through again with your um with someone that you trust in your health team yeah. just so they can you know give you some you know chat it out i've had people that have tried it so you know it's it's just mm -hmm. being open and honest i think that's how i would say to go about it but we don't have any evidence that there's going to be a benefit okay. Thank you. Mm, that's all right. All right. Thank you so much, Del. That's been brilliant. That's all right. Um, it's lovely to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> I'll come back again really, soon if you have. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. I think we could probably talk quite a lot more. We've probably got Definitely. lots more questions. What will happen, um, as I said at the beginning, was this will go be up on IGTV and then it will go over onto Facebook probably tomorrow morning. So um, you can catch it there if, if any of you want to watch it. Um, again and just um, if you've missed bits of it um, our helpline is open tomorrow morning or you can leave us a message tonight 0808 800 6000 our ask our nurse service you can email us ask us a question you can post on our forums tonight we will answer the questions tomorrow and um, I wish you all a really good evening our next live is on the 4th of February and it's going to be any question and answers from two of our nurses who, who work with us. So I um, hope you can join us then and that will be over on Facebook. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Bye. Bye, ladies. Bye.